give you an update on my financial uh, situation and research situation. So I have a lot of projects that I would like to do. I have historical revisionism projects, particularly about Japan and some stuff about Germany in World War II, stuff that I'd like to work on. I have a book that I have uh, pretty much completely finished translating and I'm now doing the typesetting and layout and all that kind of stuff on it to get it ready to release to you guys. This book is very important because it's dealing with the uh, situation in Spain in 1930, 31. It's really from about 1920 up to 31 and a little bit from 1870 up until 31. It's called The Origins of the Spanish Revolution and it's by a Spanish priest uh, from Catalonia, a Catalan priest named Father Juan Tusquets. Um, this is the only project that I've been able to carry through because I don't have the time or the money uh, to do what I want. And so you have to just pick what you want to do and then do that. Now, um, what I have been doing is I've been doing these uh, interviews with very old people who live in, who live in my area. And so, yes, yes, I found some 90-year-old people who would pay me to sit with them and basically record their life history. So couples, you know, uh, husband and husbands and wives, who will sit with me over multiple sessions and record their life history. And then we make a movie or a DVD out of it, including family photos, uh, research that I do, and uh, just making this for their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren so that they can understand what life was like when white people in this country, when Europeans in America grew up on farms, did not have all these consumer goods that we have, when they didn't have to deal with Judeo-Marxist domination of every single aspect of their culture. Now, these 90-year-old people uh, of, that I've been dealing with, because they're multiple families, different groups, um, you can use them as kind of like a sounding board for your ideas. And I really, really try not to get pushy and say, hey, what do you think about Jews? Oh, man, what do you think about Freemasonic Jewish infiltration into your, into your culture and government? You don't have to do that kind of thing. You just ask them basic, uh, basic questions about how life changed, how do people think about, how do people think about certain political, and racial, social issues when you guys were growing up, as opposed to when you were adults, as opposed to now. And so it's very productive and useful, I think, and it's also been a way for me to earn money and do something that I think socially um, uh, positive, uh, of social benefit. So. I've been able to do that project and make some money that way um, uh, from these different groups of people that I've talked to. So that's good, but uh, basically all that does is just pay the bills, um, and you have to do a lot of work editing uh, editing these videos and getting them into a, a level that everybody's comfortable with in terms of production value. And that's not one of my strong suits, but I have taught myself how to do it uh, by doing these projects, so that's good. Now, the election is going to be uh, uh, here very, very soon, and um, I'd like to give some advice to people. I think you should be well armed, and I think you should be well stocked in terms of your, your basic goods. Like, you should be able to survive two weeks without recourse to other people. It's really not that difficult uh, storing dry food, fuel. Know, it's really not difficult water it's really not difficult to survive for two weeks but if you can do that I think regardless of what happens uh, you'll you'll be doing you'll be doing pretty good because uh, the the vast majority of the people the great masses they don't want to starve they don't want to die of thirst and they don't want to be killed by marauding fans of hooligan Bolshevik uh, so and so's so anyhow uh, people are going to be pressing for an authoritarian leader if there was a big social upheaval. So you just need to make sure that you and your people are okay in the short term. I think that's the most important thing. So you got to have your weapons, you got to have your food and water, and then you just have to have a plan to get your family in one place just in case something happens. Now, uh, that being said, 
if there was a disturbance, if there was uh, some sort of disturbance as a result of a contested election, you're going to have to decide uh, what you're going to fight for and when you're going to start fighting. And so I would like to talk about a couple of uh, issues related to um, William Luther Pierce's second book, Hunter, and then, uh, gosh, I had something else I wanted to say. Uh, Hunter, and then, oh yeah, uh, Primo de Rivera, Miguel, um, Jose Antonio, sorry, Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera was the leader of the Spanish fascists. Um, of course, you know, the left always says that Franco was a fascist. Of course, he was not. Uh, Jose Antonio Primo de Rivera was the fascist leader. And he was imprisoned in Spain uh, as soon as the uh, military rebellion occurred um, against the Republican government after they won those elections in 1936. And what uh, Jose Antonio told his people, what he told the Falange, the fascists, the Falange, was that don't start fighting on behalf of the conservatives and the military. Because our enemies include the conservatives and include the military. Uh, we actually want a social revolution. We don't want a preservation of the status quo. We don't want to fight for landlords and uh, capitalist plutocrats. That's not what we're here to do. We want to throw those people out, as well as the Marxists, as well as the Bolsheviks. So he told his people, or tried to tell them, I don't know how to what degree this message actually got through because he was imprisoned by the Republicans at that time, but he told them, you know, don't start, don't start fighting on the wrong side just because there's some you know, you're just because the Bolsheviks are on the other side, don't fight. Don't fight with them. You need to wait. And of course, that didn't work. He was executed, and uh, the Falange did end up, the Falange did end up fighting on behalf of um, the Franco uh, regime group. And what happened as a result? Um, the Falange was totally hollowed out. There was no social revolution in Spain. And so even though Franco won the Civil War, and even though the Bolsheviks were defeated, there was not a regime and a political culture in place that would keep liberal democracy and social democracy and also Marxism out of Spain forever. And so what do we have in Spain today? They produce a lot of pornography in Spain. They have abortions. They have immigration from the third world. They have a low birth rate. They are essentially a tourism destination because they're indigenous industries that were created uh, during the 1940s, 50s, and 60s were basically sold off and cannibalized for short-term profits and asset stripping. So the Franco regime was a failure. It was a failure because you can't, I can't remember who said this, uh, I can't remember who said it, but you can't replace an idea with nothing. You have to have another idea to replace it. So if you're going to replace right-wing, uh, excuse me, if you're going to replace left-wing revolutionism, you've got to have something else to replace it. You've got to have right-wing revolutionism. Otherwise, uh, that, that stuff is just going to fester and boil and then reappear one day in a new form. It's just going to change and then reappear. So... My point of the, oh, and also in Hunter, um, William Luther Pierce, uh, Andrew McDonald, whatever he called himself in that book, was um, uh, the, the second half of the book is basically a conflict between two different uh, right wing strains of thought. And when I read the Turner Diaries, my thought, I was kind of taken aback by it, especially like the last third of the book, uh, when I said, my God. The political party, the group, the revolutionary organization that, that Dr. Pierce is writing about is basically um, white racialist Bolsheviks. Like that's how radical they are. They're they're uh, you know collectivist, uh, radical, uh, totally revolutionary. And I, I was taken aback by that because I do have these anti-modernist and uh, traditionalist and reactionary leanings. Although that's not the group I explicitly support, I do have those tendencies within myself, and they're quite strong. So I was taken aback by it. 
Well, in Hunter, um, the, the second half of the book, uh, spoiler alert, is a conflict between the main character, uh, what is it, is it Jaeger, I think? The guy's name Jaeger, if I recall correctly. Um, which, of course, means Hunter in German. He is fighting against a sort of J. Edgar Hoover type character who is also against the Jews and against the communists, but he does not believe in a social revolution. And so these two guys who have very, very similar ideas to each other uh, are nevertheless uh, in a life and death struggle uh, because they both want to defeat their enemies, but then they each have different visions for the future. And what Dr. Pierce was trying to tell us with that, with that, that story that he wrote was that you cannot compromise. You cannot compromise with this right-wing authoritarian uh, tendency. You've got to follow what Jose Antonio said, and you have to, you have to pull back your support from those people. And uh, you could even say that Donald Trump um, uh, has aspects of this as well, where Trump and his supporters, a lot of them, uh, they really just want, you know, sort of a, a right-wing, civic nationalist, capitalist uh, structure. They just want to get the Bolsheviks and Marxists out, not even, not even completely root them out of the society, but just sort of get them, get them away from having too much power. And I can tell you that that wouldn't work, has never worked, and is a dangerous idea. And this is why I tell people that the Republican Party is actually worse than the Democratic Party, because the Republican Party in the United States is a big sponge that soaks up the uh, effort, intellectual power, and money of white people. It soaks all that energy up and then completely neutralizes it, misuses it, and wastes it. So you get nothing. You get absolutely nothing from supporting them. You waste your time. And so this is this is the uh, these are the ideas that I wanted to talk to you about today, right before the election. This is my election speech. Um, I'm honestly hoping that there will be strong election irregularities. I'm really hoping for a contested election because I want the American political system to go down in screaming, despicable flames. I want that to happen because I don't think that there's any political solution. There is no way out except through the fire, which is pretty, well, is the title of a fairly good Soviet film featuring um, that one woman who's a, a Russian actress that I quite like. She's probably in her 70s or 80s now. But anyhow, <clears throat> If there are strong election irregularities and people do start shooting each other in the streets, what I'm what I'm suggesting for you to do is don't start fighting just because the Bolsheviks are on the other side. Don't support the police and the military just because they're uh, on the side of Donald Trump. Don't support Donald Trump just because he's on the side of the police and the military and all these sort of things. Uh, people who are right wing, people who are woke. To, the, to this side of the political spectrum. We're very valuable people, and we are the antibodies of the society and of our race. And uh, you can't afford to get killed or crippled or wounded or something um, for, these, uh, for these other things that, that actually have no future whatsoever for our, for our people, our ideology, and our families. So I'm saying conserve yourself, protect yourself, arm yourself, um, you need food, you need water, you need weapons, and you need a plan. And then you need to sit and wait and see what's going to happen. And I'm hoping that there will be election irregularities. I think probably the best thing that could happen for us is for Trump to win the election and then uh, to basically uh, then lose the election through shenanigans, which are then exposed, because that would have the most damaging effect to the American political system and would erode the political legitimacy of this country the fastest. So that's really what I'm hoping for. Um, now, if I wanted to be completely selfish, I would probably just want Trump to win and do another four years so that I can have another child or two um, and, and be able to raise them in peace and quiet. But even though that would be best for me and my family personally, 
uh, it wouldn't be best for the rest of us because every day that we live under the system, uh, we lose. We lose every single day that we live under the system. The frog gets boiled just a little bit more. So, okay, that's what I have to say. We'll talk again soon, I hope.